Welcome back to Investigate Joe Rogan. You already know what this is. You already know what episode I'm investigating. You can read. You know what you clicked on. You saw the title of the episode. The first thing I will get into here is Alex Jones says that the Hunter Biden emails confirm that Hunter got paid by the Ukraine and there was bribes for access to Joe Biden. So the main email in question, which was written to Hunter Biden and was from Vadim Bozarsky, who was an advisor to the board of the gas company Hunter Biden was on, thanks Hunter for, quote, inviting me to D.C. and giving an opportunity to meet your father and spend some time together. It's realty in honor and pleasure. That's a direct quote from the email. Those are grammatical errors, not me having a stroke. I know English is this guy's second language, probably, but still. Come on, you gotta proofread your secret emails here. Joe Biden says he never met this guy, this meeting didn't happen, but clearly this email implies that he did. Rather than get into the debate about whether or not the emails are real or not, I think there is a more source-level question you can get at instead, which is, was Joe Biden bribed by this company? Is there corruption of some sort here? Because really, that's the big question anyway. Well, typically, when you bribe someone to get access to some politician, you want to get something out of it. But it's not clear what exactly Joe Biden would have done as vice president that was so helpful to this company. What Trump has said is that Joe Biden got Ukrainian prosecutor Viktor Shokin fired because he was investigating the gas company that Hunter Biden worked at. However, it isn't as though Joe Biden or even the Obama administration were the only ones who wanted this prosecutor gone. Various other Western countries had wanted to get rid of this guy since he was seen as being too soft on corruption and possibly corrupt himself. So while I will admit that on a surface level, it certainly seems suspicious that the guy who was investigating the company Hunter Biden worked at got fired. But since a lot of other people wanted him fired as well, I don't think it's that suspicious. It's not as though... Joe Biden got him fired, or even really would have had the authority or influence to personally make sure he got fired. As for the other stuff on that laptop, Tim Dillon says Hunter Biden was definitely banging underage girls in the pictures that were on the laptop. Again, I don't think I even need to get into the debate of where these emails came from or whether or not they're real or whatever because there's just there's no proof in these pictures that there was any pedophilia or underage banging going on there are only self-proclaimed pedophilia experts on the internet who just say that the girl in the picture looks like she's under 18. I have seen the pictures. It really doesn't look like anything. It's not very suspicious. I think that pedophile is rapidly becoming the alt-right equivalent of the term Nazi. Liberals, of course, like to call everyone they disagree with a Nazi. Everyone I don't like is literally Hitler and so on. But I think that pedophile is rapidly becoming the conservative equivalent of this, where everyone I don't like is a pedophile, everyone who disagrees with me is a pedophile, and I think that soon pedophile will, like Nazi, lose all meaning as a word. Personally, I hope that the term tax evader becomes the next overused term slash insult. That way, when people call me a tax evader, I can just shrug it off and say, oh yeah, dude, everyone who disagrees with you is a tax evader. Yeah, okay. This would be beneficial for me personally if I could do this. 
Hopefully people still care about this whole Biden email thing, since I just spent several minutes talking about it. I guess you do, since you're still listening. But anyway, while they're still on Trump-related subjects, Alex Jones claims that Trump does not meet with lobbyists. And unfortunately, this is not true. Trump has hired hundreds of lobbyists to work in his administration. 281, in fact, according to Associated Press and The Hill and various others. Most of those 281 people are just random bureaucrats who nobody will ever hear of and will just sort of casually sink into the swamp like a car with a dead body in it. But there are some names you might recognize in there, like Eugene Scalia, Scalia, whichever, and Mark Esper. The Defense Department, the Department of the Interior, and the EPA are all run by Trump-appointed former lobbyists, for instance. So the so-called revolving door of being a private lobbyist, then a public government worker, and then a lobbyist again, it's very much still alive and spinning. Just spinning and, and spinning. Like how revolving doors work in cartoons. A bit later, they move on to China, and Alex Jones says China buys off Hollywood, owns the major telecom companies, as well as the majority of the U.S. debt. Now, none of this is really true, but it's sort of true in some ways. I think the Hollywood thing is true in a way. I don't think that Xi Jinping wires Disney money and tells them what to do or anything, but I do think that it's fairly obvious Disney, for instance, deliberately changes things in order to satisfy the Chinese censors because China is just such a huge market. And obviously it's true that China owns some of the U.S. debt, but they do not own the majority. That is incorrect. We owe China $1.07 trillion, which is roughly 4% of the total debt. This makes China the country with the second most U.S. debt. Japan is actually the first with $1.26 trillion. Nobody really cares about that, though, since everyone is a bunch of weeaboos who don't care about this so long as they keep pumping out anime for us to watch. So no, China does not own the majority of U.S. debt, not even close. The idea that China could somehow use this debt to screw with us is also kind of misleading. If they called up to collect one day, then yes, we would be totally screwed. But so would they. So would everybody really, since this would probably trigger a huge global financial crisis. So it would be a kamikaze move on their part, and it's unlikely that this is something that would actually happen. There are other potential downsides to the debt, obviously, but this isn't really one of them. Alex Jones also says that Xi Jinping has openly admitted to admiring Hitler and Stalin. And while I couldn't find anything about Hitler... Xi Jinping has said this about Stalin, quote, to dismiss the history of the Soviet Union and the Soviet Communist Party, to dismiss Lenin and Stalin, and to dismiss everything else is to engage in historic nihilism, and it confuses our thoughts and undermines the party's organization on all levels. This isn't really the same thing as coming out and saying, you know, I admire Stalin, he was a cool guy, I approve of all of his actions. But I guess to me it doesn't really matter. I mean, the, the Chinese government is pretty nefarious. I don't think I really need Xi Jinping to hail Hitler or something in order for me to figure this out. I'll get into parts of Alex Jones's theories and ideas on the environment, nature, a little bit in this episode, but I'll cover them more in part two. Alex Jones is really big on coal. He says coal is clean, healthy, and that America has a special kind of coal that only releases water vapor, a special magical coal. It would be nice if this were true, but it is not. He is also not completely making stuff up here, though. 
We really could achieve so-called clean coal with the power of carbon capture and storage technology. But the reality is that this hasn't happened. The vast majority of coal plants around the world do not have this technology because it would be extremely expensive to retrofit old plants with this technology or make new plants that have this technology. So coal does in fact continue to be a source of pollution and carbon emissions. It's not just carbon. They, they also spew fun things like mercury and lead into the air. But this is where I will leave off for now. And as I said, I will get more into his uh, truly unique theories on pollution and climate change in the next episode. If you want to hear me talk on another podcast, I recently appeared on the podcast called Bread Sheet, which you can find on Spotify and pretty much every other podcast website. The episode I'm in is called Investigate Doe Rogan, to keep it the the whole bread theme. This is how this is how I know that I've made it as a podcaster. Once you start appearing on other podcasts, hopefully this this doesn't go to my head or anything. Thank you for listening. Be sure to tell all your friends about uh, Investigate Joe Rogan. And I will see you next episode.